and welcome back to ESO Live. I'm Jessica. Hi, I'm Gina. And we have Bruno. a great show line. No, really? In case no. there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great show lined up for you today. We're very excited. We have uh, two veteran developers and uh, they're going to talk to us today, Lawrence and Zeb. I didn't mean veteran that way, guys. <laughs> But first, uh, we're going to go over the latest news and happenings uh, after we take a look at the show lineup real quick. So, welcome. Luke is back. Back again. Can you quote that one? I think it was Eminem. <laughs> nice one, CJ. Thank you. I'm well, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, we're going to get started with news with Jess and me. Then uh, we're going to talk about the influential factions of Morrowind with Lore Master Lawrence Schick, lead Lore Master. Lauren Schick, and Zone Lead, Zeb Cook, who you guys might have seen on uh, some of our previous shows. He's got an awesome shirt today. Yes, he does. I saw oh you guys guessing God. on what <laughs> color the shirts would be, and I guarantee you did not guess this one. There's no way. <laughs> As always, we will have a giveaway sometime during the show, so be sure and stay tuned. So real quick, we'll go over the latest news and happenings for ESO for the past couple of weeks. It's been a really busy couple of weeks. Yes. <laughs> uh, we started off the week on Monday the 22nd with early access for PC. Uh, this is for PC players who um, pre-purchase the digital upgrade or anyone who purchased the physical collector's mm -hmm. edition. Now, if you have the physical collector's edition and you can't log in, you just need to fill out a form. It's on our website. Uh, CS will get back to you and then you'll have access and you'll be good to go. Yep. Uh, we also had a pre-launch live stream happening uh, last weekend. Mm -hmm. That was a lot was really of fun. Cool. There were so many people streaming. Yes. It was great to see Folks who uh, had small viewerships, large viewerships, all across the board, PvP, trials. It was questing. the first time they were able to kind of show Morrowind mm -hmm. in all of its glory on Twitch and Beam and YouTube gaming. They were all over the place. It's really cool. And just a reminder, the NDA is lifted now. Um, so even if you're not playing it, you are permitted to talk about it. Um, you're, you're welcome to stream if you are playing Early Access put out guides um, and ping us at Tess Online on Twitter if you do create any of that content, we, we'd love to share it. Go crazy. Yep. It's time. Um, just to also a reminder to pre-order or pre-purchase, because time is running out. Mm -hmm. um, if you pre-purchase on PC again and get the upgrade that you'll be able to play in early access that's happening right now. Yep. And the collector's edition, the physical collector's edition, is just about sold out everywhere. So if you're thinking about getting it, and it includes Naryu Virian's journal, a book written by lead lore master Lawrence Schick, who we're going to talk to in a few minutes. So it's a really cool bonus. Mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking about getting that, definitely don't delay. Uh, it's almost gone, and there's very limited stock. That's um, why they call it a collector's edition. Yep. And pre-ordering um, is something you guys definitely want to do, too, before June 6th. Um, that you'll get the discovery pack if you pre-order. That includes a bunch of goodies, including uh, treasure maps, XP scrolls, a dwarven crown crate, and before that it even gets released, mm -hmm. uh, the warden costume and the dwarven dog. The pet. dog. Mm -hmm. Yep. The dog is pretty cool. He comes with this dwarven armor. He's all decked out. It's cute. <laughs> barks occasionally. Not all the time, though, right, Matt? <laughs> uh, so we will be launching Morrowind officially on. 6-6 uh, six, six at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, this is a global launch. So we put out a map on our website. There was a news article that went with it explaining sort of how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. We're taking the servers down for everything except for PC um, at 9 p.m. Eastern. So On the 5th. On the 5th, correct. So that way on the 6th, everywhere in the world, everyone will have access on the 6th. Kind of yep. cool. We will be here bright and early. Oh, yes. <laughs> Five o'clock. So, yeah, the map that is on the website, um, it kind of lays out all the different times, what it means for you, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're Eastern time, so not to be selfish, but that's, that's what I care about. Um, <laughs> and you can look for that graphic on uh, Twitter and Facebook as well. We've posted it there, and I think we'll be sharing it a few more times before yep. launch so everybody is clear on when it's, it's uh, available in your, your region. Exactly. So Tuesday, we are going to have our first, whoops. Gosh, I thought things I... on the set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
was hoping the whole table wasn't just going to poop. <laughs> um, Tuesday, we're going to have our first incremental patch on PC since Morrowind launched. Um, also, just to be clear, we know there is a little bit of confusion on this. Update 14 is live now yes. on PC. That comes with all of the gameplay changes and anything not related to Morrowind. That's already available, so that's why... Mm -hmm. If you patched on Monday, you're like, holy crap, why is this so huge? There's a lot of stuff it's that everything in there. everything except for the Morrowind content. Right. So, um, again, Tuesday we're going to have um, a PC incremental patch. It's not mm -hmm. Monday since it's a holiday in yep. the U.S. And... We're getting a day off. <laughs> Woohoo! What? I know! <laughs> One. Um, <laughs> so this includes... Um, some fixes and improvements to the grouping tool, which is also going to affect any issues that you've run into queuing for Battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. um, there's some issues where you have to mash the join queue button and it doesn't always queue you up. Mm -hmm. um, not being able to join as a group. Yeah, sometimes um, you're not able to join if you have a pre-made group, mm -hmm. but you can only do solo. We have some improvements coming to that and also long queue times. Um, also, right now we have cheap respec costs yep. for attributes and skills that's going back to normal on tuesday so if you haven't done it yet definitely Please do it do before it. tuesday morning because <laughs> then it goes back to normal after that mm -hmm. what else uh the battle masters corner we just announced today is making its return we're very excited about that we've actually been working on getting it uh spun back up for a few months now so we look forward to seeing what kind of builds you all submit there's a form now it's a really cool form yes so it, it makes it a little bit more uh, uh standardized i guess as far as the format goes mm -hmm. should make it a little bit easier for you all to submit your builds too you're welcome and we'd love to see videos if you have them screenshots um, so just go to the site there's an article on the battle masters corner and the uh the form is linked from that article there is a link yep mm -hmm. And I think we'll be sharing the first one in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll try to. We've already seen entries coming yep. in, so thank you, and they're yes. really cool. And we'll Maybe kind we had of one called the Zoo Master. Zoo, the Zoo Master? The Zookeeper, Zookeeper, I think, <laughs> came in. Yep, that one <laughs> was kind of cool. cool. We'll try and maybe feature those once a month or so. Mm -hmm. Just pick a good one, and yep, it'll be great. And then last but not least, the Morrowind Memories promotion. Uh, has started. So we've been doing the Morrowind Memories campaign on our social channels, Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram primarily for the past couple weeks. And we just spun up a promotion where you can win a custom ESO Morrowind Xbox One S, S yes, <laughs> or PS4 Pro um, if you are in the US, Canada, UK, or Australia. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that'll be going on until July 10th at, I believe, 11.59 at the end of the day. Um, really easy to enter. It is. All you need to do is tweet us or go on Instagram, mm -hmm. use hashtag Morrowind Memories, or if you go on Facebook, there's a handy little form there. You can just fill that out again with hashtag Morrowind Memories. <coughs> Tell us your memory from Morrowind, and you'll be entered to win one of these consoles. They're yep. really cool looking. We have a picture on the entry form. Yeah. Also, um, They're sweet. I, I think on Twitter also we put up a picture. But we're not qualified. Yeah, it's true. Sadness. But they are cool. <laughs> okay, everyone's waiting. They're like, okay. where's Lawrence? So we will bring the guys on. All right, so here we go. And here they are. Hey. I told you you guys could guess the shirt, right? <laughs> Look. Okay, I mean, I don't even the know. The shirt, the hat. How cool are these guys? <laughs> here we go. Wow. When is that available in the Crown Store? Uh. <laughs> All right. So for anyone who hasn't met you guys, Zeb, you were on the show last time. You're our zone lead for Vardenfell. Yes. Um, and then Lawrence is our lead lore master. And what does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, uh, I am sort of responsible for... Uh, I'm, I kind of hold together the cultural glue for all of Tamriel. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of uh, uh, am responsible for... Uh, all the different societies, the races, the, the cultures, um, uh, and sort of at the 30,000 foot level, the politics, the, the, the uh, leading, ruling characters, all that kind of yeah, stuff. He tells us, no, you can't name him that. Or... I, I, actually, <laughs> actually, it's, it's, it's hardly ever my job to say no. And what I, what, uh, all day long, people come up and say, look, we, we want to do this, and we want to do that. Uh, and it's my job to say, well, you know, 
cool, we, we can totally do that, but here's how you do that in the Elder Scrolls. Um, and, uh, Pretty it, important job. Yeah. Uh, so, no pleasure. So, he so answers actually, all my questions. Uh, to give an example yeah. for when we started on Vardenfell, mm -hmm. uh, really back when we were in the kind of like just getting ideas down on paper and all this sort of stuff, one of his jobs was to go through and give us everything basically that we already knew about Morrowind and also you know, since we were working kind of like you look at test three, it was like, oh, and that doesn't exist in our time, and oh, that wow. doesn't <laughs> exist in our time, and you know, you know, help us sort all those things out. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So yeah, and I, so I, I kind of work with every team. I work with the concept group mm -hmm. and the art. Uh, I work with the folks in audio. Um, I, I uh, came up with the. Uh, the lyrics for the new Morrowind theme oh, cool. uh, in old Chimeras, you know, and... Uh, so they are uh, saying actual words. Yes, they are, of course. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, now, they didn't use... They didn't You're use, killing them. <laughs> I wrote three verses, and they only used the first one, so I'm a little bitter about that. But, maybe uh, we can release it. I was uh, going to say, maybe you can sing it right here uh, on the show. Well, you know... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you made me sing there may, Well, I did. I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> and Lawrence a answers all my questions about random lore bits. Like, why do the Redoran helmets look like that? <laughs> what are they made out of? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, as just mentioned, are just true veterans of this industry. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about sort of where you came from and where you've been? So uh, your story lineage. How do we start this? Yes. Do you start? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're it, we're basically as old as Devaith Fear. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, or older. Yeah, Zeb and I started uh, uh, back with with Dungeons and Dragons stuff uh, back in the late seventies. Um, I was actually the first outside designer that was hired for D and D. They they liked a scenario that I had written, um, so Gary Gygax hired me, uh, and I went on into the divine design department there. And then we needed other guys, and yeah. I liked a scenario that Zeb had written, so we hired Zeb. Um, so, so he hired me at uh, TSR, and we both worked there, and then he left. Uh, you know, I won't say you know, terrible things about him at that oh, point. Oh, I feel like this is the... But, uh, this, this so is I stayed thing. on at TSR for, for <laughs> quite a few years after that, and then one day I get a phone call saying from somebody I didn't know, at the, you know, didn't recognize the number, and it's Lawrence, and he's going like, how would you like to go work for video games? <laughs> I'd actually been trying to get him into yes. video games for years before he finally, uh, he finally And so he it. hired me again <laughs> mm -hmm. into the video game business. Uh, this was for a, a studio doing, uh, this is how old, this is how far back it was that he first got into the video game business. We were doing CD-ROM games. Yeah. Wow. Uh, CD-ROM. Yeah. Remember CD -ROM. yeah. I think uh, I remember what those are. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Um, you know what I actually coasters, remember? Those coasters. Coasters. Huge. For, yeah, right. Yeah. The yeah. really big floppy disks. Yeah. Five-inch ones or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember Not, not those quite, too. but yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Right, and, and then of course I left him and went off to AOL to get in on the ground floor of the online games business. Uh, and and uh, I, I bounced around to a bunch of different studios and uh, finally got into online games with uh, City of Villains, uh, mm -hmm. City of Heroes, City of Villains, and, uh, and then basically got hired to come work at Elder Scrolls Online and Ken Zenimax, and I come here, and who's in the next office but... <laughs> You can't escape them. <laughs> this was just over eight years ago. We started here at Zenimax uh, on the same day. Um, oh, did you? Really? Yes. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, Small world. And in fact, for for a while, we even had the same job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were both we were both uh, yeah content leads mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. And then you know, gradually they figured out like, hey, what are the things that we're all really good at? And you know, <laughs> sorted this all out. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, Zeb, I think you brought some of the stuff you had. Well, uh, I think we both did. Once yeah. worked. Mm -hmm. so. Did you both? Yeah. Oh, they have some goodies down oh, there. Oh, good. So, <laughs> so there was, there was the some cool question of like, on. well, what, what, what do you wind up doing in you know, all those years at TSR? And so I brought, you know, things that I'm kind of known for. That's so cool. <laughs> you know? Second then, edition D&D. &D. Mr. Second, second yeah. edition D&D. &D. <laughs> and then, you know, this, this was actually the first thing I ever had published. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, the, of which... Uh, we were both part of because mm -hmm. he was part of the series that did the same thing, and and, and this was actually based on my job application. Yep. Wow. <laughs> the, the scenario. And it has frogs. the best cover. It has the best cover. It's, it's got a, is giant that? giant frogs getting blown ask. up. You mm -hmm. know? So that's the scenario that you had created that Lawrence. Yeah, I, I, that's right. <laughs> the the outlines of the scenario uh, got fleshed out for that. You know, he had me at giant killer frogs. And then you know, 
more more stuff there. I've got a box more of other things. I'm not going to dig it out all out because it's kind of big and heavy. Everyone um, in chat yeah. is reminiscing. They're like, oh, I remember that. that. Awesome. And I think Al I started Kadeem with second edition. Did, I, I was for a while doing like the first adventure in lots of different series mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Cool. And uh, then Planescape also and Oriental Adventures. And then Lawrence cool. has a bunch of stuff. I've about. got some stuff. I wasn't at TSR for as long. I, uh, I did I did some scenarios. Uh, one called White Plume Mountain that was pretty popular. I, I uh, uh, let me, uh, 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 edited and wrote lots of lots of this. Uh, and uh, uh, White Plume Mountain was so popular it's still being reprinted today oh, in, wow. in nice. fifth edition yeah. uh, stuff. Nice. I'm envious. He gets uh, reprinted. Uh, but but I had gone off into video games. Look at that box. <laughs> Oh I made I made cartridges for ColecoVision, oh my God. Wow. Atari 2600, and Intellivision. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then and then I went uh, and I did uh, went with off to work with Sid Meier at Microprose. I did uh, uh, simulation games and uh, now mind some you, RPGs. At Microprose, they had him they had him working on fine simulation games. A guy who knew role playing inside and out, but not was not a simulation gamer guy. Right. They gave this. They well, eventually they did, but uh, but. Uh, 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 but uh, yeah, it's, That's awesome. no, it's it's a it's an ugly story, and I'm not bitter. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, and uh, uh, this girl, you know, I worked. Uh, yeah. Just like draw me like one of your French. Yeah, girls. right. <laughs> the gorilla is just chilling on the front. Uh, those are great apes. Uh, those are those are they're My not apologies. gorillas. Yeah, they're they're the Mangani. Um, uh, and then I worked with uh, uh, you know the Ken Ralston on an early version of this game. Oh, yeah. uh, Kings of Amalur, yeah. which is a little more recent. You, some of you out there might actually have played one of my games uh, prior to ESO, and it would probably be this one. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that was. Uh, so, uh, wow, that awesome, we've got guys. a lot to it's answer really for. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot, much that can be blamed on us. Uh, <laughs> the whole room is just geeking out right I know. now. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, that was cool. Yeah. So, and, and now here we are in, in you know, the uh, game designer's old folks' home. <laughs> otherwise unemployable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Never. Much well, every time these else. guys play through Vardenville now, they can remember that you both played a part in all of this. And <sighs> <laughs> they're like, oh. <laughs> it's finally out. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. <laughs> It's it's yeah. it's out. It's not been a peaceful week. It's out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's actually gone pretty well. It's gone pretty well, yeah. aside from the uh, the battlegrounds and uh, the grouping stuff. Well, it's there's always well. there's always that. You just more. It's not so much that there's anything's really horribly gone wrong, but you just sit there. You just keep kind of waiting. Oh, You're waiting, you know, waiting to see how for people something. take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, then on June sixth, mm -hmm. even more people will get to play it. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Hey, Lawrence, real quick, this has been a thing sort of within our community and on the forums, and even myself, I'm not quite sure how, how much I butcher this. Is it Dreg? Drew? Dreg. Oh. Dreg. It's Dreg. Yeah. Dreg. That's it's what I've been saying. Dreg. All right. It's, it's pronounced as if it didn't have uh, some of the letters in it. Uh, there you as go. As if it didn't have Most either the, the, the U or the H, <laughs> right? So it's just pronounced Dreg. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. Yep. <laughs> well. Anything else? I'm sure there will oh, be more, be but now everyone's like, see, okay. Yeah, yeah. anytime we see a dwarven in. anything, we're like, Lawrence, please. Help. <laughs> Help. Um, how do you pronounce the public dungeon? Uh, the two left tingeth. So, yeah, so, yeah, that so when we worked the on it. Tingeth. Easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> we just called, we had, we had neutral left, which we, which we just called nacho, because, you know, it was much easier. Uh, and then, and then neutral left tingeth was nacho left. <laughs> well, even in, um... <laughs> Oh, what was it? We had our kind of left, which is what we ended left. up calling mm -hmm. it. Yep. Every yep. time I had to spell it out, it was our kind of left. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Um, we're going to be jumping in game a little bit, showing you some of the um, influential factions that are found in Vardenfell. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start in Balmora. Now, this is going to be an internal server, so you might be jumping around a little bit, using some dev commands. Might see some cheating, but it's okay. We're not on live. Um, so we'll start in Balmora, and what's uh, one of the first groups that you want to talk about that players will run into? So here? we're in Balmora, and Lawrence should do talking while I drive, but much easier. Okay. Sure. But this is primarily which architecture? Which this is uh, Hlalu architecture. Mm -hmm. um, now, Balmora, in the time of Elder Scrolls Online, uh, is administered by House Rhetoran, um, but uh, it was built by uh, the uh, House Hlalu uh, construction folks. Uh, because they submitted the lowest bid, uh, so uh, that's why. <laughs> of course, they did. That's why it's not in the uh, the distinctive uh, Redder and architecture. 
As uh, Lalu will do. Yeah. Yes, and uh, of course, over time, the influence of House Lalu will will grow in the Balmora area so uh, until they eventually eventually it will become. Uh, uh, entirely a uh, that's a Redoran guard. Redoran guard. Uh, it, eventually, it will become an, an entirely uh, Halalu administered uh, town. But at this point, it's still Redoran, um, and uh, the Halalu architecture is is distinctive, sort of uh, adobe looking. Um, that's not <coughs> mud, however. It's actually volcanic ash from which they which they form into a sort of concrete. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Everybody really likes your hat. That's what they. I build. was going to say. I mean. Uh, well, uh, you know, everybody both that. that one and the one yeah. in the game. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we are, in fact, all about the hats here at Zenimax Online. Uh, uh, I didn't get the memo. As you, it, <laughs> so we have a couple is, here. Does it, you know, just... Yeah, yeah no. No. I, <laughs> so over here, want. this is one of our, uh, you know, one of our principal characters that you may be familiar with. Uh, uh, Nario. Nario, who uh, will get her in better frame here. But... Uh, she features strongly in, in one of the storylines we've got in uh, the, the Balmora region. Uh, it's our Morag Tong storyline. Naturally enough. And you can talk about the Morag Tong. Okay. Uh, the Morag Tong, uh, we, uh, you all know about the Dark Brotherhood. We had a, we had a whole big uh, DLC about it, the, the uh, Pan Tamrielic uh, group of assassins. The Morag Tong are the uh, Dark Elves group of assassins that actually predate the Dark Brotherhood. Uh, Naryuvirian is, uh, uh, at the time of Elder Scrolls Online, one of their uh, leading operatives. Um, she's been featured previously. She's a recurring character in ESO. Uh, she was previously in the Deshaun uh, storyline. She showed up in Dark Brotherhood. Uh, and here she is, uh, shows up in a couple of quest lines, including the tutorial and the one that Zeb mentioned. Um, and, uh, uh, of course, she's been prominent. Uh, she was in the, in the, the, the Morrowind trailer, the Blur trailer. Uh, and she's featured in the uh, the art book that comes with the uh, the mm -hmm. collector's edition, um, which is which, uh, the... which which is it, uh, unlike the first one, which was all sort of a a uh, guide to Tamriel. Uh, this one's actually a story. Uh, it's a twenty thousand word short novel uh, written from the standpoint of Naryu, uh, describing uh, all these places that she goes uh, uh, that we are illustrated by the uh, concept art in the book. There's some um, tie-ins to that in the uh, the trailer, right? Uh, there, some there others. are there there are some crossover between stuff in the trailer and the stuff in the book. Uh, there's some crossover between the stuff in the book and the stuff that happens in the game. Cool. Uh, we we try to make sure uh, that all of this stuff is uh, consistent and supports each other. You know. Now I want to read it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so one of the things about the Morag Tong, kind of at this point, is while they predate the Dark Brotherhood and other thing, they they have essentially fallen on hard times. Um, they. They actually disgraced themselves a few hundred years earlier before our game uh, in that they, they uh, uh, kind of brought down the Second Empire by assassinating the potentates. Yeah, a little, little small thing like that. Uh, yeah, they kind of <laughs> overstepped a bit. Uh, so they were, uh, they were in the eclipse for a while, and in our period they are uh, regaining their prominence and their reputation and uh, uh, returning to the uh, a position in... Uh, Dunmer society that they uh, held previously and will hold later, uh, where they act as a sort of counterbalance between the various great houses, uh, who are always in uh, uh, in in competition and rivalry with each other, uh, and uh, in order to prevent inter-house war, uh, there's this sort of uh, escape valve in the form of the Morag Tong, in which you can uh, get a, uh, a recognized writ of assassination. Uh, against uh, your, one of your enemies, and uh, they can then be uh, legally killed. Uh, and this, uh, this is a, a way of settling matters uh, without having to go into actual uh, bloody street battles. Um, and, uh, you know, Dark Elves, what are you going to do? All right. <laughs> well, I'm going to jump over to Nisus. 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 Come on, Zeb. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oops, so I'm going to type it right this time, though. Lawrence, do you always put on the fez when you start speaking lore? Uh, no, it's already on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually very important that I wear the fez in this situation because otherwise you get this lens flare off my forehead. <laughs> uh, it's it's a big problem. Yeah. Uh, so we got any questions for you know make him make him answer more questions. More questions. Well, they're talking about rompers in chat right now, which I, oh I don't really want to talk about man rompers. How did so. you guys get on the subject of rompers? I don't even know. I, don't <laughs> I mean, I know they're super in right now, but all right. But so here we They'll are. They'll be coming right up on the crown store. <laughs> 
Yeah, we'll be selling our Argonian rompers on the Crown Store. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so this is the next kind of, uh, this is uh, basically where you get to see some of the Redoran bug huts. Um, now, the, the Redorans, uh, of course, are the mighty warriors of the, uh, of the great houses, uh, and they don't let you forget it either. Uh, and so they, uh, they build their buildings out of these uh, carapaces, these carcasses of these giant insects that used to live on Morrowind before the Redorans killed them all. Uh, so uh, now, now, at this point, they've been extinct for some time, and so they're building their, their huts uh, in, in imitation of bug carcasses instead of using actual bug carcasses, because there aren't any more left. Um, but, you know, they still want you to know that they're, they're mighty enough to kill giant bugs. So uh, that's, that's why they are proud to live inside their, their chitinous uh, uh, residences. And, you know, they picked, like, the most difficult architectural style to do just to prove mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. could do it, you know. So for you, anybody who's just joining us, I saw some questions asking if, if this is Morrowind. Yes, uh, we are running around Morrowind. We're in Nissus? Nissus. Nissus right now? Nissus. That's yeah. the only one so, I know for so sure. Yes, in this right? one, the G is silent, <laughs> unlike uh, in Dreg. In Dreg, the G is the only thing you pronounce. In Nissus, it's the, it's the letter room. you don't pronounce. It's kind of like English language, just certain letters are sometimes not pronounced. Like new. Like so, most of them, the, if you look at some of the names. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we are playing on our dev server, um, so we will be using some dev commands to hop around. And we've got uh, like right now. Zeb and Lawrence here with us, showing us the influential factions Shadrith. of Morrowind. Okay. Uh, so now we're, now we're going to, uh, to show you the Telvanni area. Uh, over on the other side of the island, on the eastern side, there's mm -hmm. Sadrith Mara. Sadrith, not Sadrith. That's right. S Sadrith that. Mara, um, and uh, uh, the Telvanni, of course, are the reclusive uh, and irritable uh, wizard lords of the uh, of the Dark Elves, and uh, they they like to live in giant mushrooms because if you were a, a Dark Elf wizard lord, where else would you live? Um, so, uh, <laughs> so in uh, Test Three, these are all these were all like giant mushroom towers with literally no sign of anything, but you just assumed it was a big mushroom, but. Uh, the art department and concept and Lawrence kind of, in looking at it, said, well, well how, do they, how do they get these things? You know, where did they mm -hmm. come from? And so they came up with the idea that essentially they kind of, you know, built a shell of, you know, they built a tower, and then the mushroom essentially becomes, grows and becomes the overall tower itself. So we'll go inside one here. And then you can, uh, once, once the mushroom is all grown, you can remove the... Uh uh, the it, foundation. And, assuming you can find it. <laughs> right. Uh, if it's still sticking out from behind the fungus. So um, this is, yeah, this is the inside of one of the mushroom towers. Somebody was asking why, why are they living in mushrooms? I mean, look at it. Why wouldn't you want to live in there? <laughs> oh man, you know, cool. besides, if you ever get hungry, you know, there's, you know. <laughs> You can just numb on the walls. <laughs> and then this is also one of our other significant characters uh, in, um, in uh, Morrowind. The, she's, She's basically the main character of the Telvanni storyline because what we did is we had so many different factions that we wanted to tell, to kind of describe, and they're all kind of very different from each other. That we, uh, for several of them, uh, the uh, Redoran, the Morag Tong, and the Telvanni, we really created a whole storyline for each one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is Sun and Shadow, uh, and she's an Argonian slave when you first meet her, which is what you're doing right now. Uh, and so. The Telvanni storyline is all about her, and I'm not even going to reveal anything about that at that point. Yes, uh, but as a general theme, uh, the Telvanni, of course, are the great house of the Dark Elves that did not join the Ebonheart Pact. Uh, mm. they're, they are uh, uh, just too, uh, uh, too ornery to, uh, to join in with something like that. Um, and so in their areas, in the parts that, of Vardenfell that are administered by the Telvanni, uh, slavery is still entirely legal, um, unlike in the rest of the pact where uh, it's mostly illegal. Uh, and uh, so you just can't avoid the, the subject of slavery uh, if you're talking about the Telvanni and their area. So we just, uh, we just take it right on with the, with the main quest line here with Sun and Shadow. So chat was asking, what is it with Telvanni and mushrooms? Like, why, why, why? do they like them so much? Why are they living in them? What's the deal? Uh, uh, have, you, have you looked at the terrain around outside? <laughs> I guess they, they don't really have, have trees. Much of a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess those so are their versions of trees. Huh? There's no lumber, right? So this is your construction material. Stop right there. Look at that uh, Telvanni guard. 
uh, let's close and look at his helmet. His helmet is shaped like the top of a, a, mm -hmm. of a mushroom. Um, they revel in it. Uh, mm -hmm. They are the mushroom guys, and uh, they're not sorry. Uh, so <laughs> uh, uh, it's, uh, it's mushrooms all the way down with the Talbani. Yeah, and then, yeah, and really, it is, it is. You know, these giant mushrooms are the material they have to work with, and mm -hmm. so you know, mushroom lumber isn't really a thing. But uh, on the other hand, mushroom spores, you can take, you can gather them, and then you can, you know, you know, tell Bonnie Mage, you can figure out how to get them to do what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. Cool to grow all around the towers. So yeah, there's a there's a really significant and and pretty the probably the, the most important mushroom forest, uh, fungal forest of, uh, uh, of Morrowind in our period is on uh, uh, over uh, the, the, the northern end of Azura's coast, um, right opposite the Grayslands, which is where Sadrath Mara is. Ah, yeah. So now let's go over to Aldrun. So uh, the uh, Aldrun in, in, this, in our period is not yet the uh, Redoran town that it will be at the time of Test 3. Uh, it's still um, a major gathering place of the Ashlander tribes. Uh, this is where they get together to uh, uh, trade and uh, conduct their uh, uh, intertribal uh, uh, discussions. Uh, and so, and they're of course an outlander, outsider group folk, not outlander. Uh, outlander is you. Um, <laughs> they're they're an outsider folk from the great houses because they. Uh, refused to give up worshiping the good Daedra uh, and still worship uh, Mephala, Boethia, and Azura um, and do not worship the tribunal. Uh, so th the great houses are, uh, are often at odds with them. Um, yeah, but there's the not a lot of love lost between the two. Mm -hmm. So their armor style is pretty unique. They're fully covered. Uh-oh. So this is one of the other principal characters mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, and she's an Ashlander that you deal with in the main storyline. Um, and at this particular moment, something ma moderately dramatic is happening to yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> She's been possessed by a Daedric prince. Oh, uh, that can never go bad. Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. So, uh, so obviously, she's having a good time. Uh, and uh, she'll be, uh, oops. Uh, uh, she'll be better. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, she said, that was exhilarating, I think. Um, so... I love yes. how the guards are walking around. Things like, oh, this no is big normal. deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this happens all the time. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Look. And, but the other thing is, um, if you remember from Test 3, the Redoran had this great crab mansion uh, place, Scar. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it didn't, they didn't build it. Um, and so this is the early version of that location. Um, and so what's the history on Scar? Scar is the last of the giant emperor crabs that once infested Morrowind when the uh, elves first came here back in the Dawn era. Uh, and, you know, uh, once again, it's sort of the, uh, uh, the Redoran motto, uh, we didn't build it, we killed it. Uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this, is the, this is the outer carapace of the, the last of those uh, kaiju-sized uh, crustaceans um, that once stalked uh, the uh, ashen plains of Morrowind. And now there's just, you can go right inside here. Uh, and, oh, we're uh, not going to. Right but now. we're not going to do that right now. Um, because uh, I keep forgetting we're not doing spoilery stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's questy related. But the, the, Ash, the Ashlanders use it for a big council hall chamber. Um, and so, uh, so, so they, they have their own use and purpose for it. Oh, is Saren named after the Tribunal Temple St. Saren? Somebody just asked. Mm. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's just not that uncommon a name among the Dark Elves. Yeah. Uh, so they have, okay. you know, they have repeating names just like we do, and yeah. it's, <laughs> so it's uh, it's not always significant when when a name is the same. <laughs> so with the Ashlander armor, while we're loading here, yeah. um, I noticed they're wearing goggles and they have covers over their mouths. Is that uh, due That's to that? That's because they mainly uh, inhabit the the more wasteland type areas mm -hmm. of Morrowind which are typically on the slopes of Red Mountain. Mm. So they have to deal with they have to deal with the ashes. They get yeah. a lot of volcanic storm and, mm. and mm -hmm. yes. but, you know, not uh, real pleasant. And so this not is pleasant, yes. <laughs> um, our uh, our last really major uh, city space. This is for those who remember Test Three, this is uh, Vivek City. Mm -hmm. Um, and like apparently, I have this. Um, I'm developing this habit or tradition of 
uh, doing zones with cities under construction. Because <laughs> he did Orsinium. Orsinium. <laughs> Orsinium yeah. reference. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see they are in the process of still building it out at this stage. Um, so we've got lots of, uh, you know, several of the cantons are finished, but we've also then got their, their, the foundations for some, uh, several more that they're building. Um, and then finally the big temple, which I will get to here. Of course, it's a forever run to get there. So we're, we're running past uh, St. Olm's Canton is what we're on now, and St. Felm's to the left, crossing over to the Temple Canton, um, which is uh, run by the Tribunal Temple. So what does Canton mean? Where we have mean? cool statues. Uh, it's just, a, it, it's just a, a, a name for a, a region here, mm -hmm. um, uh, a very tight little urban region is, is how, the, uh, how the Dark Elves use it. I would like somebody to make a statue of me somewhere like that. Just like that, a, a giant loincloth? Stat well, not wearing a loincloth, <laughs> please. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna. I you want a giant statue erected. I, I, I think somebody needs to Photoshop that. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> and now we're now we're climbing up the the many steps. The to, many steps. To they the need palace, like an escalator up the there. The palace <laughs> of Lord Vivek, one of the three tri tribunes of the tribunal. Uh, you met Almalexia already in Mornhold. Uh, there are Lord Vivek's personal guard, the buoyant armagers, uh, if, with their glass armor. Uh, okay, they okay. are uh, very vivid types. Um, or the bouncing armchairs, as they're sometimes. Yeah, called. <laughs> uh, but they're they're not they're not grim uh, like uh, like the ordinators. They're uh, uh, they're more adventurous and uh, uh, more like uh, more like Vivek himself, really. Oh, the so boy and armagers, they're the ones that are charged with protecting the pilgrim routes, right? That's right. Yeah. So they're not a part of the ordinators, they're separate? That's right. Okay. Uh, the ordinators are, are uh, in the hierarchy of the, of the temple in general. Uh, the boy and armagers uh, owe their personal loyalty to Vivek himself. Mm -hmm. And there he is. Not quite levitating so good at this point in the story. <laughs> For yes. reasons. For reasons. Yeah. For reasons, right. It's tired. But, I mean, but you know, there he is in work. his in his uh, gold and blue, um, and uh, I won't. Well, I always look at him and I just say he's that guy in the stadium <laughs> <laughs> at the college football game. Yeah. <laughs> now this is this is where I get to do my world famous Vivek impression. All right. Oh. Okay. Oh, we got to oh, see this. Oh. So you got to. Yeah. Here you got to. Yeah, in fact, I need the whole couch. All right. <laughs> here, just get up. <laughs> Just get will, out of here. I will something. probably <laughs> unplug myself. Uh, okay, maybe you can just sit on the edge. Chat's of that. like, That's what's fine. happening? <laughs> <laughs> All right, put, uh, put me up on the big screen. Okay. Do it, CJ. <laughs> you guys can't see it, but he's. he's uh, what? No, he's sitting, I, I, it's okay. We can zoom out. Can zoom That's out. what cameras are for. Oh. Yep, there we go. There we go. The suspense um, is building. Okay, so so I'm going to do my world famous uh, impression of, uh, of of Lord Vivek. Uh, this slays him in the parties. It's in the Saint Olm's Canton, um, uh, and uh, uh, you you can't actually tell because of of the angle of the camera. But but I am in fact levitating several inches above this couch. Um, uh, and, uh, I mean, I see it. Yep. For what it's worth. So so you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Love is under my will only. The ending of the words is on CV. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Here we go. Never a dull moment on the <laughs> SOLI, folks. Especially with these two. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I can't top that. I was going to say, how do we follow up with that? Yeah. So... <laughs> I so obviously, you get to, you get to spend a little quality time with Vivek in the course of uh, Morrowind, and uh, but then there's this other character over here we'll go to. Uh, he's basically one of the uh, he's the arch canon of the temple, so he's kind of like the second in command, mm -hmm. um, and you'll be spending a fair amount of time with him too. And he's he's a tri he's got a fine beard. Yeah, uh, we, I think we, we had to have him in. Yeah. We, we wanted to have somebody our age in the game. <laughs> Uh, now, of course, grumpy, as too. an elf, he's yeah. 220. I, I can see the resemblance. But, uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if you put our ages together, uh, <laughs> yeah. start to approach that. <laughs> and, uh, and he plays a pivotal role in, in the story, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thought we'd like to introduce them all to you. Yeah, I think and we've done uh, him and Saren and 
Sun and Shadows is meet the characters, and I think our our last one for Morrowind is going to be Naru next week. That is yeah. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a good one. Yeah. So. And then this is his palace. Is uh, he's got himself oh, a nice big comfy space. Oh look yeah. Up. Our art team mm -hmm. really worked hard. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah. I want a house like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It might be <laughs> yeah. kind of cold. It might be, be kind of cold, room. but you know. <laughs> Heating bill would be. I would tough. prefer to live here than inside of a mushroom. <laughs> and this whole door has some scenes uh, it's on it's got it a, too, it's yeah. telling a story. Cool. It's mm -hmm. telling a story uh, of the of the dark elf saints, in fact. Oh, uh, neat. Uh, wow. I see, see a cliff the racer. Bug over there. <laughs> 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 So, attention to detail, that's kind of what counts. There's Red Mountain off in the distance. Yeah. Uh, ominously uh, Not doing grumbling. <laughs> and, uh, oh, uh, pan up again. Oh, there's yeah. Bardow, there's the Bardow. meteor, held in place uh, over Vivek City by the will of the Lord Vivek himself. Uh, hopefully, nothing will go wrong with that will. Uh, <laughs> nope, nothing. Dun, dun, no. dun. <laughs> Everything's fine. No Everything's problem. fine in Vivek City. Look but, how pretty it is. But there you have a quick tour. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Very cool. I think we've hit all the spots that we were. And the main factions. Yep. Yep. So. So we can uh, we can we can take some questions if you've yeah, been sure. getting. Yeah. 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 There was one I just saw it pass by. Um, oh, um, Elven Werewolf asking um, in interracial marriages in Tamriel. Oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. um, in Tamriel, um, <laughs> what is the race and gender of the offspring? Uh, well, that's. I mean, I don't you even have an know answer where to begin that, with that. No, no, we do have an answer for that. There's a, there's a, there's a book. There's a lore book called uh, Racial Phylogeny. Uh, in the uh, <laughs> of course, of course there is. Uh, uh, <laughs> gender, of course, is just you know, uh, that's just a toss up. But uh, in Racial Phylogeny, uh, it says that uh, the uh, the offspring always uh, resemble the uh, the race of of the mother. So it's mm. uh, it's. Um, oh. Uh, the mother so, is dominant. Yes. yes. So um, that's what that book says. Well, course, okay. You know. Now you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, we all learned something today. Um, there was a question on the forums also um, from Anadoc. Um, he was asking why we took King Halalu's imperial banner from Test Three and then put um, the wolf design. Yep. Yep. On oh, there. Anadoc. <laughs> you've been banging that drum for a month, and we heard you. <laughs> <laughs> We heard you, and in fact, we have changed that banner uh, because sometimes people other than me do stuff that is wrong, uh, and, uh, and that was wrong. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and, and so that's been that's it's not appeared in the uh, I don't I don't think it's up in the game yet, but uh, but that banner has been corrected. So cool. there, we listen to you, <laughs> and it's it'll be corrected in a. It's not on right now, right? Uh, I don't believe it's so it's actually okay. future increment. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'll it'll be a while before it gets coming up. soon. Mm -hmm. TM, um, there was one in chat. Where was it? Uh, why does Vivek associate himself with the Redoran, since mm. he is a god of rogues? Mm. Uh, but he's also the warrior poet, and the Redoran are the warrior house of of, of the Dark Elves. Um, and, uh, and the you know, are also strong upholders of honor and tradition, which works very well for, for both for the temple and you know, obviously a lot of the ordinators and stuff will draw upon the Redoran to fill their ranks. Exactly right. And uh, when, you're, when you're building a city named after yourself uh, in, the, in the wilderness of Vardenfell, uh, you want to have some, uh, uh, some powerful administrative uh, types who are going to be able to make that happen for you. Uh, and so that's why the Redoran... That's why he's uh, he's tight with uh, with House Redoran. Question by the Alp is cracking me up. Do buoyant amigos float? <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> uh, the, they uh, float, but not in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Only Lord Vivek gets to do that, and and, uh, uh, and and of course there are. They're not so good in lava either. Yeah, uh, there there are minor tele <laughs> uh, not teleportation levitation uh, pads oh, we inside do the. Uh, Inside the uh, uh, the towers, but we didn't. Uh, uh, I forgot. Didn't I forgot do to do that. that. <laughs> so why don't you why don't you just jump back to Sadrath Mara and let's let's go let's go back and, and levitate. Everybody loves levitating, <laughs> but you can't do it anymore in Elder Scrolls. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> <laughs> they took it out after Morrowind, but we brought it back just for the uh, uh, just for the uh, uh, the joy of doing it. Yes. 
<laughs> and because otherwise, climbing the stairs in these things would be a pain in the neck. Yeah, we'll go over. You to, climb we'll all the way the down into Vex. Like, oh, wait a second, I had something else. Can you run back up? <laughs> what does Nwa mean? <laughs> and Swit. <laughs> uh, well, Swit means just exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, you can take Nwa to mean idiot, uh -huh. uh, or or you know fool or uh, uh, outsider jerk. It's, That's it's, why I always hear it in the hallway, directed it's, it's, at me. It's kind of a, it's kind of a general uh, purpose insult. <laughs> Not that the Dark Elves don't have plenty of them, because they do. So this is the uh, the Calvani main council chamber, mm -hmm. in case anybody was wondering what the heck you're looking at. Yeah. So, and that was that was levitating. And this is levitating down. Wee! Very exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wasn't it pronounced Enwa in test three? Enwa? Enwa instead of Nwa. I mean, Maybe we're saying I, it wrong. I'm always wrong. So. Languages <laughs> change over time. <laughs> <laughs> which, which sounds more insulting, really? <laughs> Nwa. Or Enwa. Yeah, no. you know. <laughs> um, Gold Paradox was asking, what is there in terms of a chain of command for the ordinators? Hmm. Uh, there, there is a, uh, uh, if you go into the, the ordinator headquarters, which is in the temple canton, uh, you can find, uh, the head of the ordinators there, uh, and, uh, and speak to her. I don't think her. it's there anymore. Is, is that get moved? Okay. Yeah. Well, we do have a head of the ordinators, and, and she's <laughs> the same ordinator who wrote the ordinator, ordinator motif style book. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we have, we don't have much of a, we didn't have a call really to, uh, to do a full hierarchy because we don't have a quest line involving them, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but but we do know who it is. Okay. And there are, you'll find lore books about the ordinators, and there are four different uh, uh, different subgroups. Oh, good. Uh, see, yeah, he knows more about them than I do. You know, I just said, "Yeah, it's an ordinator. Put him in." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good question um, from Alara. Uh, they've been wondering for the UA. UESP wiki names page. What do the Red Guard name prefixes AF, AL, and AT mean? Mm. Ah, um, uh, at means you're coming. Is always followed by uh, a uh, a location mm. name. So, so that means of basically yeah, basically of, of this from, place, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, AL and AF, as if I recall correctly, are both uh, relationship. Um, yeah, one's like things. son of... Yeah, I think Af is is offspring. Yeah. And At is... I'm sorry, Al is family of, something like that. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can't do it right <laughs> off the top of my head. Yeah, have him send me an email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, it, if you guys want to ping us uh, either GNRIV email or even on Twitch, we can we can send those questions yeah. over to, sure. to Lawrence. <laughs> I was giggling at what Trogi just said. <laughs> Could a warden be an ordinator? And if so, would they be called a wardenator? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, in fact, you could be in Vivek's garden and be the Vivek's garden warden ordinator. <laughs> wow. You heard it here That's first. quite a title. <laughs> um, Don't get him started on puns. <laughs> oh, oh, please start. <laughs> I saw too many fungi puns in chat earlier. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, well, we will take a few more questions, but in the meantime, we would like to do a giveaway. Awesome. What are we giving away, Jess? We are giving away one of the two new houses that come with ESR Morrowind. You don't actually have to have ESR Morrowind to be able to have and enter and play around with these houses. So we're just giving away the houses, uh, one or the other, your choice, whoever wins. Uh, I don't remember the names of the houses. Which ones? Do you know um, where they are? They're, I, I the they're the, oh, oh gosh, it's, it's a Hualu style one and a, I think it's a Redoran style the one. The Redoran one, that's right up here. <laughs> yes. Oh, right. maybe Let's we can even show it, it off. Yep. Wait, we need a key word. Oh. What should, uh, what should the word be, Lawrence? Uh, <laughs> what's the key word for? <laughs> oh, actually, I'm not going to ask you because it'll be too difficult. The true like type. <laughs> oh, okay. If I can't spell it, then let's see. Uh, should we Nacho do? Nacho left. Yeah. <laughs> nacho left. Nacho. There we go. Nacho left. Nacho, all together. Nacho left. All together. Yep. Thank you. I'll confuse people. And the case does not matter. Uh, so. Okay, just run north from here. Yeah. Oh, a couple oh, people look, actually started people are typing. Trying. <laughs> They're like, no, I know it. I know the real, real one. Nacho left for the giveaway. So we're going to show off one of 
one of the houses that you could potentially win here. Is that the house? No, uh, that's no, left. Camp. Left. 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 Yeah, it's got a it's, uh, time of day. It's a. Uh, oh yeah, it's oh, kind of dark. Make it kind of. Make it a little, a little lighter. Yeah, Zeb. What? Can you make it a little lighter in the game? Oh, it's getting dark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're cheating it's now. It's not your eyes. <laughs> we are on devs, so we can do this. <laughs> hey, look! Hey. The sun came out. Kind of. Kind Magically. of. It's up behind the ash clouds somewhere. Yeah. Okay, We're now you're going the wrong direction. Backseat players. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, go that way. No, do, oh, you're dying. No, I'm not going no, the wrong no. direction. The oh, no. Right oh, no, it's okay. roll. I know. It's roll. <laughs> All right, keep running. <laughs> I think that was a troll. It was a troll. It was a troll. Doing doing what trolls do. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's right on the other side of Ashal Mawia here. Oh, it's great, which means I'll probably get killed through here, too. Uh, hey. Well, yeah, there's some keep Daedra, running. you know. Everything uh, will be fine. <laughs> when in doubt, jump in the water and swim. <laughs> that never goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the the other house, the uh, the Halalu one, is the uh, uh, Lake Amaya Lodge, if I recall. Oh correctly. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. That sounds mm -hmm. right. I I don't even know if I want to ask this question. What? <laughs> Where did Vivek get his staff? Oh, Muatra. <laughs> it's not actually. It's it's a spear actually. Uh, and uh, it uh, you you need to read his thirty six lessons and then. Uh, uh, then you will you will find out more about Vivek Spear than you want to know. Which you can find all 36 lessons in, in the zone. Oh, in cool. here, yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw people asking about this is, the uh, I'm not sure if I can go in or not. But. Yeah, but the door will give us the name. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Old Velothi Harbor House. Because, ah, right. Because the docks yep. right down there so, yeah, so are the best old, part is, old Velothi Harbor. Is that not only do you get this house, but then kind of outside it, if you were in the zone, you would have your own private little dock, sort of private, you know, because not many people run up this way. Well, smugglers. Yeah, smugglers. Cool. Okay, so we're going to choose a winner. You will get one of two houses in Morrowind. Your choice. Red Bull 1419 AG. Congrats, Red Bull. Congrats, Red Bull. You just won yourself a home in Morrowind. You nice little vacation now. home. I am going to real send estate. you a message. Yep. Uh, You're now a real if estate you, tycoon. Right. I guess. Well, we'll see what platform it's on. I know if they're playing early access, they could get it now, and you if not, they could now. get it on. Indeed. Well, um, let's see. I'm trying to multitask here. Got any more questions? And just failing at it. Uh, um, no more questions. Yeah. Oh, somebody <laughs> did ask um, why. Why there wasn't some sort of Easter egg for that memorable test three reference of the wizard falling from the sky? Ah, yes. Hey. Uh, uh, well, we just explained that because there's no levitation in Morrowind at this point. <laughs> except oh, I thought in, you were joking. Except no, it's, it's true. <laughs> there's no levitation in Morrowind uh, at this point, except uh, what the Telvanni have got in their towers. So people can't fall from the sky because they can't get up in the sky. And Vivek a little, yeah. Yeah, yeah plus, and Vivek a little. But plus, you know. you know, we had so many other Easter eggs, we could only cram so many in. You know, we, were we tried to put in a lot of a lot of references to characters and places and stuff mm -hmm. from Morrowind. And there are a lot, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the trick is, you know, that that's 800 years later and trying to have characters from that period. We, had, we, we, had to, we did find characters that we could use that were, you know, and how they were different in our time versus what they later become. Fortunately, the, fortunately the elves are long-lived, uh, particularly the wizards. Yeah, not uh, immortal, though. But, uh, <laughs> right. Um, and plus, there also there's a lot of information on their families and genealogy. So we were able to do a lot with characters in, in uh, yeah. ESO's period who are related to characters mm -hmm. uh, in, in mm -hmm. the later uh, test. Grandfather, three. grandfathers of people that come later. That sort mm -hmm. of thing. Great. Well, I'm sure we could sit here all day asking you lore questions Definitely. and <laughs> how to pronounce things. What What's the hardest thing to pronounce in the game? Do you think? What do you I, think? I can't say it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking Good answer. We were talking beforehand. We should have had like little cards held up which one is incorrect with which one is real? Spellings. Yeah. Which one isn't real? Yes. <laughs> that one would be the hardest for me, but I, you know, this uh Which one? That's the Dreamer ruin right there that uh since I haven't visited it yet, it's not on my map. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that Nacho left? No, 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 it's not. Uh, which that's I've gotten pretty good. That's it's Arkansas student. Oh, oh, Arkansas Sturdums. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. Like that's, that's actually the one theme of the... of the show. Is just yeah. Okay, <laughs> what he said. <laughs> okay. Well, bye.
<laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the show. We had a lot of fun. It was fun. Um, we will have um, the show is recorded on yep. Twitch in case you missed part of it. We'll um, have it up on YouTube in an hour or two. It will be. Um, the next show is going to be June. June. Two Fridays from now. Something. <laughs> where is it? June 9th. Um, at 3 p.m., we're going to be going through the new trial in Marlwyn, mm -hmm. Halls of Fabrication. Uh, we'll have Dungeon Lead Mike Finnegan here, and um, I maybe believe, somebody else. I believe MJ is going to be joining okay. him. So cool. That'll be a good show. We're just going to do a fly through of the dungeon. And um, MJ is good in the lore. She can pronounce all the words in the Halls of Fabrication. Nice. Woo! Good. That right. means we don't have to try and do it. <laughs> uh, just a reminder that there will be a patch on Tuesday, not on Monday next week. Mm -hmm. They'll have some fixes for um, queuing and battlegrounds, among some other things. So be on the lookout. We'll be publishing the patch notes early, mm -hmm. as always. Um, and yeah, let us know what you thought of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. And everyone's been asking for a Lawrence and Zeb show. So <laughs> Be you, careful what you ask for. Right. You <laughs> might be taking over our <laughs> jobs. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Thank you all and have a great weekend. And remember, Morrowind launches in just a couple weeks on June 6th. June 6th at 5 a.m. Eastern. So see you then. Bye. See you in the game. Okay.